We're teaching on emotions tonight. And just to review last week, in some measure, I think some of the diagrams and the terms, you're getting familiar with them. But I want you to sit next to somebody who you can talk to, uh, because this is how we'll, we'll kind of work our way through the class, uh, because I think it'll, it'll stick better if you uh, talk. You know that that portion is in Proverbs 22. I'd like to turn there for a moment. If you were to ask me, why do you talk to your neighbor? I think of Proverbs 22, verse 17, and uh, verse 18. Yes, 17 and 18. Bow down thine ear, hear the words of the wise, supply your heart unto my knowledge. It is a pleasant thing if you keep them within thee, the words, you keep them within thee, and they will be fitted in your lips. So to learn to talk is part of the Christian life, and to learn your vocabulary and terminology, and then to share it with each other, I think it's very helpful. Uh, first uh, short diagram here is simple, and it is uh, this one. The heart with a hole in it. <clears throat> and this has uh, two meanings. It has a good meaning and a bad one. The good meaning is Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse uh, 11. He has made everything beautiful in his time. Also, he has set the world in their heart. Does anybody know what the Hebrew word is there for world? He has set the world in their heart. Eternity, yeah. So he has set eternity in the heart, Ecclesiastes 3.10. What is the meaning of that? You have, anybody? What's the meaning of that? He has set eternity in our hearts. Yes, sir. Uh, um, insatiable. Yeah, the insatiable yeah, orientation, desire. I will not be satisfied except by eternity. And eternity is a synonym really for God. God is eternal. He dwells in the high and the holy place. Turn to, uh, I get that correct, is Isaiah 57. Turn there with, is it? Sorry, 50. No, 50. It's verse, uh, okay, 57, 15. For let's say the high and holy one that inhabiteth, inhabiteth eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy place with him also that is of a contrite and humble spirit to revive the spirit of the humble. So the believer is to inhabit eternity with God, or a person is, and he's given us the capacity. It's kind of like a hand in a glove. A man's design is for eternity, and he can't find uh, his counterpart in, uh, in this world. He must find it in God. God, God and man fit together. Okay, this is, what, this is one of the meanings of the whole in the heart. The second meaning is kind of the other side of that, and that is uh, uh, because I don't have God, I have uh, need, I have a uh, uh, insatiable desire or a longing for, and we use two, two words, remember what they are? Two things, the whole, and, and I've lost God, I have a hole in my heart, I have my old sin nature, and it's characterized by uh, what is it that I cannot find? A person is lacking these two things. Yeah, okay. I'm like surprised. I'm like, 
Whoa. I don't know how many times we've said it. Secure, security and value or worth or significance. Secure, we could put this as a, a noun. Security. Is that spelled right? Security, yeah. This is IT. Yeah. Okay, value, security. Because I don't have um, God, I feel insecure and I feel insignificant. So we have drawn it this way in our diagram, this one with the heart with a hole in it, and then these little particles orbiting around the heart, right? What is the meaning of that? Those are the things that are in life that don't ever satisfy me. Those are the things in life that I put in my heart and I'm hoping that that would satisfy me. But I find they don't. I have a short list. This is from the psychologist Larry Crabb. I will be significant if, and I think, uh, is this in the appendix of our book, Pastor? I don't think so. It's, it may be in the back. I, I've been reading the book. It's very good if you have been following through that book. And we are on the chapter of emotions, and that's our subject tonight. And it, it, this is a great class. We're going to have a great time in here. I'm, I'm so happy to be here. And thank you, Pastor Simon, for your work and, and uh, study and for our textbook. I will be significant if, and these are the little orbiting particles in our diagram here, if I have money, if I never make a mistake. I like that one. That is not how I was brought up. I was brought up being with people that made mistakes, being with a family that made mistakes, and being personally responsible for making mistakes. And I was never condemned for making mistakes. So I am not afraid of taking risks. I'm not afraid of failing, as far as I know. I've never been put down or ridiculed for making mistakes, so I'm very happy and free, uh, generally, because this wasn't a problem that was initiated to me in my upbringing. You will be successful if you don't make a mistake. You'll be valuable if you don't make a mistake. On the other hand, I see children raised by perfectionists, moms and dads, and they interpret life this way. If you do it right, and you always do it right, you know, that's the meaning of life for you. Never fail, never make a mistake, okay? These are these little orbiting particles, okay? Um, if I am a steady worker, I will be valuable. If my kids turn out well, I will be valuable. If I'm granted recognition by my peer group, if I'm included in important circles. I will be secure if I have a loving husband. Wow, you know, think about that. I'm a young woman or an older woman. I will be secure if I have a husband that loves me. If I am never criticized, I will be secure. And if everyone accepts me, I will be secure. And if no one frowns or hollers or in some way rejects me, I will be secure. We find out that people that get these things still have these problems of uh, insecurity, and uh, questioning their value, all right? So that is the problem in the world, is the heart of man. And the primary psychological study in our course is the heart of man and how it relates to the other parts of our soul. So uh, 
would you repeat what I just said to your neighbor for a moment? You got one or two minutes. Let's go ahead. Okay. Next diagram. This is a diagram that I'd like you to, to uh, learn and understand. It's very simple. It's the new heart. And uh, we're going to put like a three-dimensional rod in it like this. Okay. We could even put it out the back side of it. Ooh, okay. This rod, if we're going to label it as truth. We can also say uh, Holy Spirit. Of course, he is the person God. Remember, the Holy Spirit is a person that dwells in our new heart. We have a new heart and new spirit. Ezekiel 36, 26, another, you know, solid Bible verse for our course that we repeat all the time, Ezekiel 36, 26, making the Bible psychology the most incredible study of human beings you can find on the earth. It's amazing. Like, we are so privileged to understand God and ourselves and each other in the context of his unfolding plan because we talk not only about soul the soul of a man but we speak in the body but we speak about the spirit this is the the source of our new life and orientation it is the the truth that the holy spirit reveals to us in our heart all right, so that's different from the heart with the hole in it. This is the heart that God, Christ, dwells in. There are many Bible verses on that. Uh, John 15, I am the vine, you are the branches. John um, 14, 17, 16, 13, the Holy Spirit the comforter when he will come he will guide you into all truth let's write down a number of verses galatians we've crucified the affections or passions and lusts of the soul we walk now in the spirit we are filled with the spirit and i i encourage uh, us the body of christ the church myself uh, people that I know and, and lovingly exhort and encourage people to be filled uh, with the Holy Spirit and uh, be under the influence of the Holy Spirit. The effects our nervous system. It's very interesting. In Ephesians 5.18 it says, Be not drunk with wine. And in the, the parallel... Is, I don't believe it is accidental. Be not drunk with wine. What does wine do to your body? It affects your nervous system. Yeah, alcohol affects your nervous system. It affects your mind and your emotions and you, your body. But be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. What does the Holy Spirit do? It affects your nervous system. It, it affects your uh, mind, your emotions, and it affects your body. Where does it say it affects your body in the Bible? Romans 8, 11, to be just as Jesus' body was raised from the dead, so you also are quickened by the Holy Spirit of promise. And then Proverbs chapter 4 um, we read that it is good for our flesh. Uh, chapter 4. Um, 
the path of your feet, Lord. Find you, my dear. For they are left in the household to the other flesh. 22, verse 22. Uh, for they are life unto those that find them and health to all their flesh. This is the um, words of God, our health to all of our flesh. Okay. Uh, now let's go to the third diagram. I think we have about seven diagrams in this class tonight. So uh, this is the heart with the truth that is affecting the heart, and then that affects, the heart affects the mind, and then there's a linkage between mind, emotions, and will. Okay, does this make sense to you? It's like this, it affects the heart, it affects my mind, it affects my emotions and will and mind. I put the three together because uh, you can't really separate them. The mind and the emotions, they go together, and also the will. Uh, for example, um, uh, have you ever have you ever read a fascinating story about a missionary or a fascinating fascinating story about a person and it, it's in your mind and um, but it's time to go to bed but you don't want to go to bed because you want to read the story and so you just keep reading it and you have a lot of pleasure in reading the story and you just read it till like two in the morning. Has that ever happened to you? Okay, that's a good example of mind and emotion and will and how they're linked. You really can't separate your mind from your affections. This is a, another word for emotions it's effe uh, affections. We uh, have the word, the word study is uh, in the chapter on emotions and um, the three Hebrew words for emotions. And then the, there's a couple of Greek words um, and for feelings, desires, emotions, affections. I'm not going to do a specific study on those words tonight. There's a lot of words, vocabulary that we can learn because I want to get to the fundamentals and communicate the fundamentals to us and the ideas that we have regarding what does the Bible teach about us and our sin nature and the mind and the emotions and the will, and then our new birth, and the mind, and the emotions, and the will uh, in our new life. Okay, so uh, there we go. Let's take, do you, you see the picture? I think it's very clear. Why don't you talk to your neighbor for a minute? You got a minute, and explain the diagram to your neighbor. Any question on that? Okay. Uh, diagram, is it number four? Yeah. Okay, diagram number four is really simple. I almost had to hesitate drawing it. Uh, you, I think you know it in principle. This is a train. One car, cars, three cars. The train, what's the meaning in our analogy here? The train, and we have truth what's the next car faith and what's the next one emotions emotions very simple what what is to 
govern your life? What comes first? Truth. What comes next? Believing it, embracing it. Then what comes? Emotions. Emotions are not designed to run your life. If emotions run your life and determine for you your life, you're going to find yourself very unstable because emotions essentially are to be linked with thought and thought on a higher order than just natural thinking. There is thought of a higher order and lower order thinking. We'll see that in the next diagram. But let's park there for a minute. What do you think about that? Do you get it? I know you do, but do you understand that? It, it, this is a huge difference between people. There are some people that have truth, and they have a lot of it in their hearts and in their minds, and their lives, their emotions complement the truth. They follow. They also develop in time. We have what we call the higher order emotion and lower order emotion. We'll look at that in our next diagram. But do you see this? Do you, can you, let me ask a question. You ask, talk to your neighbor about this. Have you ever met a person whose life has been governed by emotion rather than truth? Answer, look in the mirror. Okay. All right, let me ask it again. Have you ever met a person that obviously their life was governed by their feelings? And there's, there's many words here we can put down. Let me read, read the list to you. Insecurity is an emotion. Depression, stress, frustration, inferiority, that's a complex, guilt, loneliness, fear, bewilderment, bitterness. We could also say many of the drugs that are prescribed to the American people today, over-the-counter and, and prescription drugs, I mean prescription drugs but easily attainable, are gear, geared to make people generally happy. It's an emotion. When the American people need some deeper remedy for their problems, and that is their thinking, what are they, what are they following? From one uh, suspense movie to another, some novel, uh, uh, romance, adultery, betrayal, deceit, movies about evil, uh, empty churches, Empty gatherings, lack of intimacy, lack of connection, lack of inter in meaningful communication, and people living in emotion. First Timothy chapter 5, and I, I read about uh, Freud a little bit. In, in Vienna, one of the things he did was he met with wealthy women in Vienna where he was teaching, and, uh, and I, that, the whole idea of, um, of uh, and I'm, you know, it's not a, it's not a, um, uh, it's not a shot at women, but it relates to a portion of scripture, First Timothy chapter five, that's kind of a funny reading in our, King James, but I'll point it out to you, 1 Timothy 5. And, it, and it's a biblical. Uh, Paul's teaching that the, that the single women or the also widowed women, uh, that they were to have a very solid way of thinking. And... Um, not be misled. Uh, verse 13. 
but verse 11, but the younger widows refuse when they have begun to wax wanton against Christ, they will marry. Uh, getting married as a, a widow isn't wrong, but uh, he's making a spiritual point here. Emptiness, uh, lust, wandering, um, uh, emotion, governing the life of uh, the believer, having damnation because they will cast off their first faith, verse 12, with all they learn to be idle, wandering about from house to house, and not only idle, but tattlers, also busybodies, speaking things which they ought not. Um, there is a pattern there. All right, I will therefore that the younger women marry, bear children, guide the house, give more on occasion to the adversary, the devil, to speak reproachfully. And look at verse 17, 18. Okay. All right, so uh, would you talk to your neighbor and ask, have you ever met a person who was led in life by their emotions? Any comment? Okay, any comment? How, uh, let me ask you, how, how many of you, you could just say a word, just a word shouted out. You have a person who has been led by their emotions and um, what, what, what's that? Overreact, okay. I mean, deeply, like they may go from one relationship to another uh, because they are because they are emotional. Um, there are people on. Well, get, you you talk. Anybody? Yes, Sean. Yes. Yes. Okay. Let me repeat what you said. Is it? Let me repeat what you said, so everybody can hear. Because I don't think everybody could hear. All right. Sean is saying he's been emotional most of his life, which is like an honest confession. Give him a hand. No, I'm joking. <laughs> it took courage to say that. No, a biblical. No, it doesn't work. I mean, it it works for a night, three hours five hours, maybe you have a good weekend. Uh, you go from, from Friday to Friday, you look forward to the next weekend. I mean, it's a lousy way to live, but it's an easy way, all right? So let's, let's move on, okay, because we don't wanna, here's the next uh, diagram. And this, uh, this we gave a, a brief Review on this axis, this is a low level mind, we can call it low level mind, okay? Or, or put here OSN, old sin nature. This is the higher order mind, the mind of Christ. <clears throat> um, what happens is your mind because it's not regenerated or because it is carnal, you have all those little, little, little uh, particles orbiting around uh, your mind in, in terms of your heart, in terms of finding satisfaction, finding security, and finding value. And uh, so you think this way, like that list I read, you know, if I have a motorcycle, you know, I'm going to be really happy. If I have a beautiful girlfriend or a very good guy, 
you know, I'm going, that's, I'm going to be good to go, okay? The, these thoughts are lower level because, um, uh, the, as we said, you are made for God, and it's the mind of Christ, that rod, this is the, the mind, the new mind that God has given you, that also affects your emotions in a, in a, in a high order. And we make the uh, line this way because um, Isaiah 32, um, 17, it's peace like a river and righteousness like waves, wave after wave, like at the sea, seashore. It just keeps coming. This the effect of righteousness is peace um, and security. And you feel it in your emotions. But it's, uh, we're not, we, we often say I'm, we're not emotional, but actually it's not really a correct way of saying it. We are very emotional and emotions is a big part of life. Uh, and it's very healthy to be emotional. But in the sense of who's driving the train and the source of the mind, the mind that produces a high level emotion. We, we ha have these lower quality emotions that are kind of oftentimes spiked like this spike. You, you have a, an emotional life with a mind that, you know, you, okay, if I have a motorcycle, I'm going to be, you know, that's it. You know, I'm going to have what I wanted and people are going to talk about me and I'm going to have my tight jeans on and a bandana like I saw in the magazine and I'm going to crank up the radio on it and you know, whoa, man, okay, low level thoughts, okay, and you are made for the mind of Christ, but what happens emotionally? Um, it's so the, the mind cannot produce the kind of emotions that are long-lasting and relational and uh, with, with the effect of uh, security. But it'll be, uh, oh, I kill, um, you know, I bought them, but they were arguing with me at the Harley Davidson shop. I can't even believe the way they treated me. And uh, I got the bike, then they gave me a phone call, and they said something's wrong. And, and I, they're going to call me on Friday, and I don't know what's going on. And, and then I'm, I'm riding the bike, and somebody, like, they look at me in a strange way. And uh, my life, based on that has an emotional uh, state that really is uh, uh, not, a, not a blessing to me. And it's because I have been seeking for uh, something less than what I am made for. Jeremiah 2.13, turn there with me, read that. My people have committed two evils. Now, I, I think maybe the illustration I gave about the motorcycle might be a little immature for some of you. I understand that, but maybe we could plug in there um, a marriage or the birth of a child and, um, you know, a good job or uh, something in, in terms of life that might have a little more weight to it and how, uh, how important these things are to us as people. And yet, when, w the whole point of being a human being is that your capacity for life is not determined by these circumstances. Your capacity for life is determined by Christ himself, that God himself came into this world 
and that he has actually given us his new heart, his Holy Spirit, and his mind. Now we are thinking these, these um, thoughts. Jeremiah 2.13, My people have committed two evils. They have forsaken the fountain of living waters, the source, and hewed out cisterns, broken cisterns that cannot hold water. We won't take time on explaining that, teaching that, but that's powerful. Two evils. They cannot hold the water, and they don't have the right source. They don't have the, the source. The fountain is the source, and then the holding tank is broken. Holding tank is in the ground, you know. Here's the ground level in Israel, and they would have these these large, you can stand, a hundred people could stand in this cavernous, hewn out cistern. I, I've seen the, them in Israel, huge, uh, a portion of this room, a cavernous cistern. And if in the, in the rock formation there was a crack here, the water, the rainwater would come in and run along, and they, they built the, the runoff water so that it would collect there. And the, the ground level, and the, the water would run into the cistern, and it would be like a reservoir of water, fresh water. So the fountain, they made two mistakes. They didn't have the right source, the fountain, and then secondly, it was cracked. They were crack pots. Crack pots. They couldn't hold the water. All right? The flesh of man, old sin nature man, he doesn't know Christ and he doesn't have a capacity to hold what Christ gives him. He can't get it, he doesn't have it. If he got it, it would just run, run, run and be gone. He cannot hold it. But because God has given us a new heart, then uh, we're made for this, and it affects our emotions, okay? Um, let's go back to the, this uh, graph, this one. Spikes in the emotions, horror movies, relationships, weekend to weekend, versus these long, even like just, it, it gets better and better emotionally, your stability, your mindset, the linkage between the mind and the thought and the feeling and the will. This is why you go to Bible college. Not only you go to Bible college because of uh, the, the mind of Christ in the Bible college and in your personal life with God, but how it affects your emotion your affection, and then your will. And you find that, wow, I can't believe it. My parents would never know how much I enjoy going to the church. It sounds strange. I enjoy going there. It has affected my will because that's the effect of these emotions. This is Colossians 3 and verse 1. Set your affections on things above not on the things below. That will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. Isaiah 26, verse 3. Say that together with me. It's a good verse. That will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. Again. That will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. Wow. Psalm 119 Great peace have they that love your word. Nothing will offend them. They simply will not be easily offended. And in that verse, it says they will not be offended at all. God said, great peace have they that love your word. That is that high order thinking that Christ promised us that affects our emotions and our will. Uh, so that we actually look at life with imagination. Okay, this is uh, our next uh, diagram. 
goes this way. The same one, uh, but I'm going to add some words to it. Here's truth, new heart, and my mind and emotions. <clears throat> Here are some key words that are linked with mind and feeling or emotions. There's a linkage. Number one, one expectation. Expectation. It's a great uh, word here in the Hebrew, yetzar, is a Hebrew word. It's translated expectation, it's also translated imagination, imagination. And this is in uh, Genesis 6, 5, when God looked upon the earth and saw that the imaginations of men were evil continually during the time of Noah. The Yetzar, or the, the way people uh, thought in terms of uh, what they wanted, what they were looking for. I think this is one of the great, great changes that happens in the hearts of people. They desire something else. If you were asked a man, just an unsaved guy out on the street, you could have anything you wanted for a weekend. No, nothing, no, no, no penalties, no, no guilt, nothing. Just do anything you wanted for a weekend. What would you do? And what would he think? If nobody was watching, if nobody knew if I could do anything I wanted to for a weekend, what would I do? This is this word, yetzar, the imagination or expectation or projecting in, in my heart what I want. And for you to be uh, clean and for you to desire God is a work of grace. But this is what has happened to us, that that truth from God has come into our hearts and we love it and we have now godly expectation. And that word is linked with my emotion because uh, it, it has a sense of hope. It has a sense of um, like a pleasant sense of a positive effect. Like what could, a, how could God use me? Or what is God saying? Or how do I think about my weekend? The same question asked to a believer who is under the influence of the Holy Spirit. And he may, he may be thinking like, like I, I'm just thinking in terms of, uh, I am personally, deeply uh, influenced, kind of excited in my heart with Jesus Christ. I'm, I'm, I'm like motivated deep in my heart, uh, and I'm thinking about um, how God could use me in the body, what God is doing, what his plan is. I, I love to think about how uh, God uses us and what his plan is in using us. So here are a few words connected with this. Um, discipline. You don't think of uh, emotions and discipline, but actually they're connected. Discipline. Emotion. Uh, high order emotions 
actually direct me in a disciplined life. Um, I, because you are men mentally, your mind and emotions are of a certain order, uh, this leads you to disciplined thinking, disciplined living. You now have a hunger for discipline, but it's different. It's not a discipline of the body or discipline of, um, you know, a, a trained student, but it's a, it's a discipline of the heart, and it's very simple. But you, you are now thinking of, like, this moment, God is here, God, this, my purpose in my life, how God wants to use me. It, it could be described a little bit this way. You know how in a clock, it's 12 and 6, right? Is it 6 and 3, 9? You have an hour hand, and then you have a minute hand, and then you have a second hand, okay? It's this one, the minute hand and the second hand, that we look at. The, th the hour hand is, is something deep and long-ranged priority. It's like God's plan. Do you see that? It'll take time. And I'm not, I'm not concentrating on the long, the long plan will happen. But how I am thinking now, this minute hand or this second hand, yeah, this is the new discipline of the believer. What am I reading? What am I thinking about? Who are the people that I am with? Where are we going? The, the big plan will happen as I live in the Holy Spirit now. The Holy Spirit will do the work, and he will get it done. The hour hand will move, but I'm not, I can't stand around waiting for it to move. I'm, I'm moving with, the, with those, those hands that are more, you know, the, the right now, what is it that God is doing this week, uh, this weekend, God's plan for my life? And somebody else say, well, I'm waiting for something to happen. They're, they're looking at the hour hand, waiting for something to happen for years, decades, waiting for something to happen. And, and the disciplined life of the spirit-filled man with the new mind is just day by day, minute by minute, where we are living with a godly expectation in our heart regarding his will. He will do it. But I'm just going to pay attention to what, I, what he has for me now. It's actually an easy yoke, and it's a heavy, it's a light bird in Matthew 11, 29. Does that make sense to you? I know it does. It's not, it's not difficult to understand it, but, and it might even touch your heart. That's the important thing, that it would touch your heart. That, that, you know, I never, th I never thought in terms of the big thing. I, I did, like my priority, but I, I, it's God that's going to bring it about. But I can pay attention to what God has for me just now in this class. I can pay attention to what God has for me this week. I can pay attention to what, what he wants me to teach me in a disciplined life that is mind and emotion and will linked. Isn't that good? Okay, so, uh, boy, I wonder if you, I know you got that. You got a lot out of that, I think so. Whew, boy, you wanna, do you want to say it? Huh? Say it to your neighbor. Go ahead. If you want to, or sit there and think about it. Okay. One more uh, diagram before we take the break. When you come back from the break, we got about three or four more little diagrams to do.
Because it's just, it's just a diagram pack class, that's all. Okay. Uh, I think uh, I made a mistake here. Oh, okay. Um, the, the heart and the emotions linked with it uh, in the mind. Do you know what we mean by emotion and mind link, linkage and will? Here are some more words. We said expectation is a good example. When I was in Bible college, by way of testimony, when I was in Bible college, I actually started to think about being a missionary and I started to think about it, but, um, and also being a pastor. But I didn't go to Bible college to be a pastor, and I didn't go to Bible college to be a missionary. I just wanted to learn the Bible and be with believers. And Pastor Stevens was giving these great messages, and I just wanted to learn from him. And he became also a great friend to us, ministered to us, and he cared about us. But the greatest thing that happened was that this new birth, the Holy Spirit and the truth that affected our minds and our emotions, which affected our personal life and then also our, our relations, relationally. And this is where emotion has a huge effect upon the lives of people. It is in our interpersonal relations. I found myself in the body of Christ and fellowship with hope and expectation. And we would say things like, you know, God's going to use us in Boston, Massachusetts. And we rented a bus and we drive down to Boston and we'd go soul winning. And I was so, uh, I remember that experience. I led, I led 19 people to the Lord that day one by one through the whole day. Like I was on fire for God, you know, it was like amazing. I, would, I was just running around the city as yeah, soul winning. And that's what we, we went down by bus with a group, of, you know, maybe 40 people. We were in Boston Commons and we get back on the bus and drive back up to Maine to the Bible College where we were. And uh, I was just so uh, just believing what Christ is saying in the Word. And this became a habit. And then also our relationships with each other, the guys in the dorm. We had a big dorm. I mean, it was a big room with 40 men living in it in bunk beds. And uh, it, to me, it was heaven on earth. I loved it. And we had Sunday school buses, and we bought our own buses, like um, Dr. Lewis, who was like helping, he was the uh, assistant, he would come to some of us who had uh, jobs, uh, most of us did, but I worked in a factory, and he said, do you want to buy a bus? And I said, well, how much do they cost? He said, well, we could get a used one for $800, and I said, yeah, I could buy one and use it and fill it with kids uh, for Sunday school and bring them here. So we did that. And by the time we moved out of Maine and we moved to Massachusetts, we had in the parking lot like this, half the size of this one, 51 school buses that we would go out all over the area picking up kids and bringing them to the church for Sunday school. And we had like, because we were kind of crazy, we were like radical, and we had a pond, a little pond, and we had one guy dressed up in a scuba diving outfit, you know, and he was like the green monster. And when the bus pulled onto campus, you know, we the, the guy in the bus would say, and in this pond it's been known that there's a monster man in there and all these little kids would be like, where and they'd look over and then he'd, he'd just come up out of the out of the pond i mean we had i we did things that were just so much fun uh we had a balloon with a dummy you know going up you know 
I, you know, there's a man, a man coming across the campus, you know, and the kids would be like, who is that, you know? And then he crashed, and then we had a, a man, the, the dug out print of the body that was in the ground with, you know, nobody's there, and we would bring the kids and say, look it, this is where he landed. Like we were skillful at deceit. I mean, so I, I, what I'm trying to say is uh, the, the emotions are powerful. Emotions are powerful. And when they are used in a good way, uh, they are used, and we have a list here from our, our textbook. And um, let's see. Uh, they are appreciators. Yeah, here we go. Emotions linked with truth. The mind recognizes and discerns reality. Emotions linked with the mind experience that reality as God designs. Like to experience the reality emotionally is part of God's design. A simple example, <clears throat> biting into an apple, you know, if you like the taste of it or any food that you like, you bite into it, it affects your, your body, your uh, emotion, your appreciation. It has an emotional effect. And then, of course, it affects your will when you eat more of it. The physical world, a good example, is food. Number two, in the relational world, like a man and his friend, a woman and her friend, a man and a woman, uh, a, a man with a dog or an animal, a pet, uh, people as uh, in the body of Christ, the disciples of Christ. Number three, so relationships, number three, the emotions intellectually, when you are intellectually stimulated it gives you emotionally great pleasure when you find something that is so reasonable or in the case of humor, which is a, is a function of intellect. Yeah, humor has an amazing, I mean, uh, intellectually, the wit or the humor, the turn of a phrase or a saying has a great effect on us emotionally. We are made to be this way. And then, um, number four, in the world of art, and I just leave it at that. In the world of art, there's an emotional element there when you see something beautiful and you appreciate it. But the emotions in themselves don't think. They appreciate, they indicate, they have an effect on our will. Many times we eat more food, it affects our will because of this emotional effect of the food. So there you have a good overview of how it works uh, uh, in a healthy way. And here are some healthy words and then we'll take our break. Uh, Here we go. We said expectation. Let's do it this way. Expectation. Uh, godly anger. And how important it is to be angry, but in a godly way. Um, it lasts, um, there's a lot to be said about anger, but we, we, we could tempt an old class on that. But we will not do that. The word joy, hope. I mean, we won't do that tonight. Love is not primarily an emotion, but it's a thought, but it's linked to our, our hearts and then therefore our mind and our feelings. Our emotions are part of it. 
but not all of it and not the primary part of it. It is not primary. Emotions are not the primary, like the engine on the train. It's a love, agape love, not sentimentality. Love, peace, wonder is an emotion. It's beautiful. Wonder, amazement, confidence is a godly emotion. Isaiah 32, 17. Strength is also something you feel, and it's an emotion. Three more words. Forbearance. This is when you have patience. It's a synonym for patience. Forbearance, gentleness, and kindness. These are all linked with the mind, and they have an emotional effect upon us. Okay, uh, want to take your break? Move around, go ahead. You've got uh, seven minutes at 7.30, we'll start, and we have more to say. <laughs>